Well, good morning. Yes, I'm Pete Nigeri, and this is the Take for Market Rebellion on this hump day. It's Wednesday, and what a start to December that we had. Yesterday really started off very, very strong. Sorry if it's a little echoey. I'm on that RV trip that many of you either know about or have heard something about, and we started that up, and here we are. We're already in Kansas City, so it's pretty exciting, and, and my wife and I are excited about it, and it should be, uh, should be a great trip. It's going to be multiple weeks, so uh, this is going to be fun, but it's also going to get uh, give me an opportunity to be in front of you in a lot of different locations and maybe even some of the uh, different companies along the way that we have planned on stopping at. And unfortunately, because of COVID, we weren't able to do this uh, the other day. We were going to do it from the stadium over there in Lincoln, Nebraska. That was going to be exciting, but just too many things going on that didn't allow that to happen. But hopefully we'll be able to do that with some of the others. Anyway, going back to yesterday, the markets were up about 300 plus points on the Dow, a nice big move to the upside. But in that final hour, we actually came back to the theme that we've been seeing so much of 2020, which is a very late move one direction or the other. Well, we got about a hundred plus uh, point move to the downside on the Dow yesterday, late in the day, in the final hour of the session. Nothing big, but just nonetheless, a big, you know, a, a bit of a pullback, I should say. Um, as we were seeing that occur, we also saw that in the NASDAQ as well. The NASDAQ had a pretty uh, unbelievable day yesterday and, and, and an unbelievable move, quite frankly, to the upside, but gave back some of those gains, still finishing up about one and a quarter percent yesterday, but gave back about 50, 60 points of the NASDAQ. It was up over 200 points at one point um, on the higher ends of the day for the NASDAQ. So again, uh, both those two individual uh, indices with a nice big move to the upside. So the industrial started out the day pretty strong. That's what weakened up. And matter of fact, when you look around and try to try to determine exactly what it was that was pulling on the markets, there was a combination of a few different things. We had the industrials that pulled back. We had financials that pulled back or eased back, I should say, and energy. And energy really was was the big contributor because we'd wa watched the price of energy for a while now, just moving to the upside. And when I say the price, I'm talking about the XLE and some of the other indices, the XOP, OIH, all these various uh, areas. And when we talk about those, we're looking at some of those as the big beta names that I bring up all the time. And, and some of that just sort of hit a little bit of a pause, no big deal, but we have been uh, on a little bit of a downward spiral. We were looking at the XLE as it was moving along and we were up and over 40. And now here we've been pulling back and pulling back and, and yesterday, just nothing bad, but just continuing to contribute just a little bit to that. So that combination really started to shift the markets at least a little bit to the downside from where they were still finishing very, very strong. Got volatility still trading right around that 2021 level. Will we be able to break through 20? I thought we might yesterday. We really didn't. But uh, at some point in time, it seems like we're destined to sort of break through that level once again. And then we'll see where we sort of is a resting point where we actually can maybe see a pause in the volatility that's been falling from those 40 levels just a month ago, all the way down to where we are right now. The volume yesterday, again, extraordinary. 37 and a half million contracts again yesterday. So you've heard me talking about this theme about all the derivatives paper that we are seeing and it continues to be very strong even on that half day 25 million. So it gives you a little bit of an idea of how much power and strength is coming into the derivatives markets right now as we've been moving and, and as the markets have been absolutely on fire and the velocity of some of these moves has been impressive. Well, we're seeing a lot of that playing out in the derivatives markets and specific areas. And I'll tell you what, one of those specific areas, again, semiconductors continue to be strong. When we see pullbacks in other areas, that's the one spot where we look around at various sectors and we just don't see it. It just seems as if the semiconductors, different leadership each and every day, but it seems like the semiconductors just continue on this path higher and higher and higher. So Second day of December, and uh, we looked like the markets really wanted to get pulled to the downside. We were definitely looking at a 100-plus move to the downside on the Dow. We were looking over at the NASDAQ. That was down about 90 points in the pre-market as well, about seven-tenths of a percent. So we were starting to see a little bit of a pullback. At some point, you would think that we would have some kind of a pause, some kind of a pullback. But we are already starting to eat into that a little bit. Volatility still trading right around that 21 level, I'll tell you. The Dow, the, the biggest influence on the Dow and, and, and certainly is something that needs to be uh, pointed out is when there's single names that are absolutely moving these major indices, um, you have to discount that a little bit and look at the entire index and just say, all right, so what's really going on here? Because if you look at Salesforce, you could see a big pull on the Dow itself. And 
uh, quite honestly, a little bit of a pull on the S&P. But Salesforce, which was added to the Dow in that last grouping, uh, that's a name that is definitely under some pretty serious pressure. It was down nearly 9%. So when you've got one stock out of those 30, you've got a move like that, that's going to have a big influence. That's exactly what we were seeing. We've seen a little bit of those that, that negative side start to pull back a little bit. We're getting a little bit closer, down about half as much as we were in the pre-market so far. So we also are seeing a nice little bounce out of Zoom, which had been under some pressure. Moderna, which yesterday was under a little bit of pressure, a little bounce back there as well. So uh, these rebounds in, in financials and these rebounds in energy, we're seeing it in energy today as well as the XLE not only got back up and over that 37 level, we got pushing on that 3750 level as well. So the combination of a little bit of weakness in technology, a little bit of weakness in biotech is why we are seeing still some of those negatives and some of the some of the red that we are seeing on the screens right now. So, but but as I mentioned, the semiconductors just continue to rock. As a matter of fact, they are in positive territory on this down day with the NASDAQ and the Dow and the S&P. And you look over at the semiconductors still in the green. So um, are they at the all time highs? No, are they really close? Yes, they're very, very close. So I've got a little bit of unusual option activity for you. We had about 10 different uh, selections for me this morning already in this first hour. Um, there was a, there was, it was tough to pick. It really was. It is every day, but it's tough to pick which of the names um, that, that just feel like needs to be highlighted. And I thought today, this one just stuck out because it just hit not too terribly long ago, but Boeing. Now, Boeing was trading about $218 a share. They were coming for this Friday, today's Wednesday, this Friday expiration of the 220 strike calls. And they were paying a buck and a quarter. That was a nice uh, early entry as they were continuing to buy, paid all the way up to $4, 18,000 of these calls being bought. So that's a that's a really big trade. When you look at the, the premiums that they're paying and the, the numbers themselves, 18,000, that's a pretty extreme number. So that one stood out to me. There was a couple other choices. There's some in the semiconductor area as well that I thought were pretty interesting. But um, I thought when I once I did see that Boeing, I said, you know what? I think I'm going to have to choose that one. It's no, it's never easy. It's always tough because there's different areas of the marketplace that you're just kind of curious about. And I'm trying to highlight at least some of those areas where we continually see more than just one hit, but seeing all kinds of different hits in specific areas. And people have been talking about this industrial space for a while now, Caterpillar, 3M and Honeywell and Boeing and all the rest of these names and throw in some of those rails as well. But um, we are seeing some of that uh, occur and we are seeing definite derivatives paper across the board. So a couple of quick questions and then we're gonna run because I know we got a busy day. As a matter of fact, I got a webinar later on. You're gonna wanna check this out right at the close. Myself and Ryan Master are going to be doing a webinar through Market Rebellion. Should be great. You can look at all the details on the Market Rebellion site so that you'd be able to get get in there and watch that. So, thoughts on Marvell's earnings, which are going to be out tomorrow. Marvell, I tell you what, it's a name I love. Um, I've talked about this one. I've had questions about this before um, in the last few days. But the reality is, when I look at certain names, I, I look at uh, the leadership and the fundamentals, and are they moving in the right direction? Do they have growth? I think Marvell, check, 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 check across the board. That one, I pulled uh, the trigger and got back into the stock on the pullback when they made the acquisition, just because it seemed to me that it, uh, the acquisition was going to be something that would be absolutely, um, uh, that they would fit perfectly for them going into the future. So I felt like the fact that the stock actually sold off on that was the wrong decision. So that's why I decided to buy it. I own Marvell, just so you know, full disclosure, I, don't, I own the stock itself. Morning, Pete, um, your take on Empis. I'm sorry, I don't know that name well enough. I, I, know, I know a lot of the names in the energy space, not all of them. I don't know this name well enough and face energy. So I apologize but I, I don't want to just give you some sort of an answer because the reality is I don't know that name nearly well enough. Um, Tesla, question mark. I'll tell you what, I, if, if one theme did stand out for me today as I was looking at tickers and looking, looking around in the markets is the EV space, which has been absolutely on fire. Uh, many of those names getting pulled down to the downside today and under pretty significant pressure across the board. So just be wary of, of, of the big moves that we see in a lot of these various names. And when we talk about Robin Hooders and all the rest of it, I don't ever want to say that in a negative tone, but when you see um, the floods of paper going into certain areas, you, you, you do wonder when does that party stop? 
Um, I don't think the party has stopped, but I think there could be a bit of a pause and that's what we are seeing today. And when you start to see the herds start to get out of certain positions, that oftentimes can move entire sectors. And I think that's kind of what we're seeing right now in the EV space, at least to a degree. Um, Workhorse pullback, that's another great example. Workhorse, we talked about that one. We've had unusual in there. I just had that the other day. And um, sometimes those things are explosive to the upside, sometimes not. Um, in this particular case, it looks like there's a decent pullback. We'll see how extended that is. Micron, somebody's asking me about Micron. I'll tell you what, monster name. We've talked about this one for a while now. Unbelievable amounts of unusual option activity in this name consistently, including just yesterday, multiple hits. It's been been there for a while now. As soon as I get out, it seems like I get right back in. I mean, it sounds like a mafia movie, right? Every time I get out, they bring me back in. So uh, Micron, a lot of unusual option activity in there, and it just continues to have a pretty strong run to the upside. It did pull back after it started to run towards 70, but they were actually buying 70 strike calls yesterday as well, just to give you a little bit of an idea of just how active that is. Marvell for tomorrow's earnings, talked about Marvell already. Um, and I think that's it. I think uh, I th there's a few more questions. I'm sorry, I really can't get to all of them, but check in that webinar later on today. That should be pretty exciting. And keep an eye on this big RV trip my wife and I are on. We're gonna be going from a lot of different headquarters of companies along the way, might be able to do some broadcasting from there. All, all of that is dependent upon the pandemic and all the rest of it and safety. So that always comes first, but it should be pretty fun. And we're gonna be going through a lot of different cities, a lot of different states. It should be a, a pretty uh, lengthy trip. We'll see how well we, uh, we handle this RV, but it should be a lot of fun. Hopefully we'll see you later on this afternoon with the Market Rebellion as I sit down with Ryan Mastro when we start to go through all kinds of different things on the unusual option activity. Have a great day, guys.